ISO 27001, Annex A516, Identity Management. Let's go through an implementation guide. So this is an evolution of access uh, management, right? You, you know, start a lever mover, all that kind of crazy stuff when we were putting in access uh, management around individuals. The 2022 version of the standard now talks about entities. So this is around about uh, entity management, uh, identity management overall across many entities, right? And again, that seems sensible, right? There's more, uh, there are more things than just people uh, that require access. One of the biggest changes in the 2022 standard is the acknowledgement now that more than one person, more than one entity uh, can have access uh, to an identity, right? So in the olden days, and still actually a good point of principle is one user, one ID, one entity, one ID. But the standard now acknowledges the fact that multiple entities, multiple users may need to share one ID and it gives you some caveats around that. Um, but again, it's a risk-based system, right? This is about proportionate controls to mitigate the risk that you've got rather than a rule-based system. So I think that's a sensible move. Let's have a little look at what the definition of the standard is, and then I'm gonna get into the implementation guide for you. So the definition, nice and easy, the full life cycle of identity should be managed, right? This is everything from the beginning all the way through to the end of that identity, right? This is about full life cycle management of identities. The purpose here is it's a preventative control. We're putting in a preventative in control that, are you, that ensures the unique uh, identification of individuals and systems, accessing organizational information and other assets to enable the appropriate assignment of access rights, right? So the things that we're doing here is we're looking at, you know, being able to make sure we know who's accessing it, to be recording it, to know who and what uh, they've done, uh, and to be able to track that back. One of the things that it won't talk about here really is one of the biggest issues that we're gonna have is when something goes wrong. Again, we've touched on it before, it's about non-repudiation, right? So when something goes wrong or somebody or something does something wrong, there are loads of checks and balances that we're gonna put in place, but ultimately it'll come down to the fact of can we prove that they did it? So the more robust our identity management process, you know, the more we focus on a one user, one entity to one ID, then the less likely it is that somebody can challenge that it wasn't them uh, when it came to the action that we are now investigating. So just be aware of that. Uh, but it's a nice, easy one to go through, right? So let's have a look at the implementation guide, right? We're gonna implement this identity management. So implement an approval process for creating and revoking identities. Okay, it's nice and simple. You want a process that covers how we create those identities, how we manage those identities, how we allocate those identities, all the way through to how we finally delete those identities. So thinking user accounts, system accounts, that kind of old fashioned terminology, we cannot go around creating these willy nilly, right? We're not just creating accounts for the sake of it, allocating them to everybody and allocating them to nobody and just forgetting about them, right? There's gotta be some management of identities within our environment. Your process can be simple, but the deriving principle is the person making the request cannot be the person that approves it. So here, when we're doing our approval process, we're looking at segregation of duty. We've touched on this before, and we actually used this as an example of segregation of duty, right? We don't want to request access, request approval, and then be the person that approves it. And we definitely then don't want to be the person that implements it. So when we're putting in our processes, we're gonna make reference back to segregation of duties. We're gonna make sure that those segregation of duties uh, are implemented. So this is part of making sure that we know what identities are in, are in an environment and somebody somewhere has approved them and made sure that they are allowed. So the next step that we're gonna go through is we're gonna confirm the business requirement for creating an identity. This might be something that is either formal or informal, but every identity that we create really should have a business requirement at the back of it. For belts and braces, we might want to record that. It's important to understand why you're creating an account, why you're creating an identity, and it allows the person approving it uh, to understand what and why they are approving it, as well as allow you to maintain some level of control in this technological wild west that you no doubt already have in place. Particular attention really should be given to things like admin accounts and privileged accounts. There's probably extra steps that you want to do in those. 
These are the kind of accounts that can cause significant harm, right? You probably want some additional checks and balances around those. The next step when we're implementing is verify the identity of an entity before creating the virtual representation. Okay, so the standard doesn't give much guidance on this. Clearly it is going to be hard, if not impossible to do for non-human entities, but it's a hangover from when they only worried about user accounts, so they kept it in. It does make sense for users, right, and people. So as part of the approval process, as for the human that requires their identity, verify who they are and, not, and that they are who they say they are, right? And I'm hopeful that this makes sense. There are, again, different levels of complexity depending on how large your organization is and how complex your organization is. The smaller it is, the easier it is. But you've got to get some verification back. Just because somebody requests something and says they are who they say they are doesn't mean to say that they actually are, right? So put some verification in there. I'm not saying to check passports and photo ID, but I'm saying be sensible and do some level of check to satisfy yourself that the person is who they say they are. Use some common sense here. If you get a request that it doesn't feel right, no one minds if you pick up the phone or you check, you ask their boss and you ask other people for verification. Better to be due diligence, better to be more diligent, better to be a pain in the ass for people and do double checking rather than create these accounts under pressure and then they create all kinds of problems for you, right? In our process, we're going to create that identity. This should be done by someone who knows what they're doing. Again, it goes without saying. This should be a, an expert within the technology or the area or the process that understands it and creates it. This is, uh, identity is going to be used to access some stuff. So it's probably a good idea at this stage to create the record of that identity and who it was assigned to. So create the identity, get the person who knows either the technology, the system, the process to do it, somebody within that team, not somebody who's inexperienced, and then keep a record of it so you know who it is and what it is uh, that you've just created. You're gonna then configure the identity and activate it. So the guidance within the standard says it should be done by someone who knows what they're doing, right? It's easy to create accounts and identities, but you really should have experience to understand what you have created and how to configure it in a way that meets the approved request and needs of the business rather than the default system identity. Defaults are defaults, right? Defaults are defaults for a reason and defaults by default are usually very insecure because they try and cover all bases. So we wanna create that account and then we wanna tailor that account based on our knowledge, business risk um, and needs so that we're restricting all the things that it doesn't need access to and all the things that it doesn't need associated with it. Do not use default identities and do not use default passwords, right? I shouldn't even have to say that. Default passwords are just a no-go, right? Create the identity, create a password for it, but do not use the defaults. Did I really need to say that? I think I did, right? You'd be surprised, right? I mean, a lot of people create these default accounts, right? Then a lot of people get hacked off of the back of it. It's easy to Google uh, what, identif what defaults are, right? You know, pick a system, Google it, default admin, 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 admin password, just, <laughs> just Google it, and then you'll see how easy it is to breach these. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna get that right. What are some of the considerations when implementing identity management? We've got a couple of considerations, right? We talked before about one person, one ID. This would be my ideal go-to. I want that non-repudiation. I want to know that that identity was created. Only one person has access to it, even if it's a system account and an admin account. The standard does allow for many persons one ID. Uh, again, I would put that on my risk register if that was the case, and I would look at compensating controls around that. And I would also then just be aware personally that if many people have access to one ID, there's no way you can tie the actions of that ID back to one individual, right? So it's just gonna be a case of, well, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, you're never gonna know. Things like change management, backing out change, who did a change, who did an unauthorized change, who put something into live when it shouldn't be into live, you know, who created uh, an account that they shouldn't have created, who did something, you've got no way of tracking it if many people have access to that ID. Let's have a look at non-human IDs. The implementation guide above went through it, so you want an approval process, right? I don't want to be creating non-human IDs on the hoof, right? I want a process similar to the process for a human. I want a process very similar for a user account, and again, and a system account, and I'm taking into account the variations of types of account in there with the checks and balances for admin accounts and privileged accounts. Make sure you have a process for that. Let's not be having people just creating system accounts willy-nilly. What we do definitely want to do as part of our identity management is we want to remove those old IDs. Our process should be tied in. We, want, we need to probably be working with HR, understanding what our start, a leave, a mover process is, be making sure that rights are removed, IDs are removed, identities are removed as appropriate. If our process is for some reason we need to keep an identity for a period of time 
uh, for audit purposes or legal purposes or regulatory purposes, that's no issue. We're gonna make sure that the access control to that is managed and that the access control is revoked for the person that previously had the access to the identity. But we're gonna make sure that we're removing old IDs in line with our retention processes and retention policies. I don't want, we don't want, the standard doesn't want system IDs and people IDs and all kinds of IDs and identities floating around in this system when they're no longer needed. One of the considerations is you can only call something by one name. So this is, again, potentially new within the standard. The standard doesn't want you calling an account by different things, right? So if we have an, if we have an identity, if we have something, um, we don't call it you know, the orange and then this team calls it the green and this team calls it the yellow. We call it by what it is and it has one name. If your entity server laptop or whatever is called Brian, then it's called Brian. It isn't called Brian by IT, but Anna by HR, right? We don't have different names for different entities. The entity has one name and that name sticks throughout. Another consideration is we're gonna log stuff, right? The standard wants us to record significant events. There's another control, there's another uh, Annex A that we're gonna to come to on that, but we're gonna log stuff, right? So the use and management of identities, you know, we're gonna keep that to a level that's appropriate to you based on your business risk. It's a powerful statement and, and it was a clause in its own right, but logging and monitoring of identities in the Ministry of Accounts is a must. We have to log what's going on with these accounts, right? And there's some key, key things, you know, we can go through them, failed log on attempts, account creation, account deletion, there may be other things that you wanna record and it's up to you what significant means, but the standard wants us to record significant events associated with identities. So that's gonna come in. As I say, it used to be in its own right, now included in here. The identity management principle, the principle on identity management for me is one user, one ID, right? Unless you have a compelling reason why not, that would be the principle that I will be working on here. So if we're gonna go through how to comply, implement a process for creating, updating, and removing IDs, implement an approval process, include a business case or a justification in that pro approval step, have a HR lever process that removes user IDs and identities, regularly review accounts and identities, put that review in, so that these dormant accounts and these dormant identities uh, get caught or these, you know, if the HR process didn't quite follow through and somebody has left, you can catch it and you're gonna log and you're gonna monitor activity. The audit is gonna check a number of things. They're gonna make sure that you haven't done something stupid, right? That you've got your process, that you're following your process and that your process works. They're gonna make sure that you've got rules and processes uh, and that you've trained people on them. So this is about looking at what you've documented and make sure that you're following and doing what it is that you said that you've done. Simple things that we've covered on other, uh, on other annexes, right? Mistakes that people make, right? You know, identities, IDs, people that have left, services that are no longer actually needed still exist within our environment. Third parties with open access to accounts, third parties with access and accounts that are no longer needed because uh, it didn't follow the management process. We didn't take into account the management of identities of our third parties. That is a big mistake. And getting your documentation wrong and not up to date. So why is it important? I'm gonna to touch on this, right? Identity management is important because you're trying to protect things and a primary way to protect them is to restrict access to them. To grant access, you need something to have the access. That's the identity, that's the account. We then want to be able to say with certainty that actions performed by that, by that identity or account were, were done by a specific individual, right? This only really gets super spicy when things go wrong. When things go wrong and we want to blame someone, we have to find out who it is that we want to blame and be sure beyond a, batter, beyond a shadow of a doubt that when we unleash the both barrels of HR hell on them, that we are confident as anything that it was them, right? It's more and even more important if a criminal investigation was to take place, uh, that it's even more important because you want it to be right, right? If someone commits fraud or a criminal act with your account or a shared account that implicates you, how would you feel? Right? You're gonna be dragged into that. Awkward at best, at best, a little bit myth maybe, you know, it ain't gonna be great. So we gotta make sure that we're managing those. So that was ISO 27001 and NXA 516, all about identity management, that life cycle management of those identities all the way through. Have a process, document the process, include approvals within it, follow it from the beginning to the end and you're gonna be absolutely golden. I remain Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja, as we continue our journey through the Annex A controls. But for now, that's that. Peace out.